the third largest geyser field in the world, El Tatio is located 4,320 meters above sea level in the Andes Mountains of northern Chile. It is an otherworldly place with steaming and bubbling geysers surrounded by high volcanoes and home to flamingos and vicuñas. It's so awesome here. Yeah? My name is Sane and this is my husband Michael and our daughter Julia. In this series, we are spending four and a half months in Chile, exploring as much of it as we can, from its north to south. So join us on our journey through the longest country in the world. This morning we're driving to El Tatio Gizes and the road itself is quite the adventure. It is in a terrible condition. Donkeys in the road. Mm. 70 mark bomb. <laughs> I can barely get the car to 50. This road is very slippery. Yeah. Now the guy is sliding all over the place. Good thing we're not driving this in the dark. We've had a very early start this morning. We woke up at 5 a.m. and got out at 20 past 6, so not that quickly, um, to head up to El Tatio Gizes. So we are going much later than everybody else, because most people leave at 4 a.m. Uh, to get to the Gizes before sunrise to see as much of the steam rising as possible before the ground heats up and you don't see as much of the steam. But the road there is quite treacherous from everything we read and I really do not want to be driving that in the dark, especially with a load of buses and, um, and I've seen the way they drive, you know, this is not, it's not, might not be the best idea uh, or the safest idea. So the driving on the road is clear, we can see it and um, I'm sure we'll still see the geezers anyway. It's an awesome drive if I can keep the car on a straight line. <laughs> now at the moment the road's not too bad. See, look, it's responding. This road is horrendous. There's lots of big, big potholes. We're definitely glad we're not driving this in the dark. Very. Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't want to be driving. Yeah, look at the holes. Whoa. Wow, this is quite bad. Oh, is wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're now doing 10. 10 kilometers an 10 hour. 10 kilometers an hour. Oh, gosh. Are you sure oh, this wow. is not for 4x4s? Four I'm sure. It's possible to do it in a um, <laughs> normal possible. car, as long as you have high clearance. Well, we just take it slowly. We get there when we get there. 30, is that a challenge? If I could do 30, that'd be great. And big drops now to the sides of us, just to help. It's a stunning road. While Michael is looking for his sunglasses, we pulled in and I'm having a look at this view. We bought some coca sweets because it's supposed to help with altitude sickness, so We'll see how it works. So far, this bit of road is much better. Oh yeah. That is pretty bad. Just stopped at a lagoon and there's loads of flamingos and they're much closer than any of the other lagoons that we've been to. There's absolutely loads of them. So this is definitely the best place to see flamingos. Wow, that's a lot of flamingos. This is how close we are to the flamingos. It's awesome. It is so cool. So even just the drive to El Tatio is worth it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Very, very close to them. This one is preening his feathers. We've just spotted some vicuñas. There is some frost to the sides of the road now. 
Yeah, yeah it's quite cold outside. What is the temperature? Five to four degrees has just changed. Yeah, it's pretty horrendous. It's gone very misty now. We can't see too far ahead now. This is horrendous. Twenty kilometers an hour. It's a bumpy ride. We may be about to come to the end of this thing. Hopefully. It's a seventy mile an hour, seventy kilometers. Oh high. gosh. We finally come to Altatio Kiesfield. It only took us over three hours to drive here. <laughs> even though the Google Maps said that it would take us less than two. But the road was so horrendous that uh, we were driving it so slowly that, you know, three hours later, we're here. And uh, as of December 2022, the entrance to the park is 15,000 pesos per person, and that includes children, um, except for children under eight, I think, are slightly less. There are three main reasons why it's better to come a little bit later. Even though most people come here at sunrise when you get a lot more of the steam uh, coming up. Uh, as you can see, there's still plenty of steam now and it's almost 10 a.m. Uh, but the three main reasons of why to come here later is that if you're driving yourself, at least it means that you don't have to drive that horrendous road in the dark, which is not fun. The second one is that there's hardly any other people around. So you all get to see the Giza fields almost by yourself. And the third main reason is that when the tourists disappear, the pecunias start to come down from the mountains. Well, that, that was I mean. quite close. <laughs> that geezer came up quite close. When the tourists leave, the pecunias come down from the mountains. So you can see the pecunias quite close up. Uh, and that was that's pretty awesome too. My suggestion is coming a little bit late in the day. And it's not so cold. That's the other main part. Because it can get to minus 30 degrees Celsius um, in before 8 a.m. And at the moment, we're walking very comfortably around in our new llama wool jumpers. So it's perfect. Oh, it gets um, steamy here. You can't see anything. You know, you really can't. It smells a little bit like sulfur. Are you cold, sweetheart? Give that a cuddle, that he'll warm you up. So awesome here. There's quite a few geezers around, and uh, you just walk all, all around them. But there's two places where you stop to park. So this is the first one, and then we're going to drive another kilometer down to stop at another place and walk around some more geezers. As Julia just noticed, that water is very clear. Is this cool? Yeah, apart from I feel very lightheaded and stumbling. Oh, yeah, it's the altitude. I don't like it. We are at 4,300 meters and you can feel the altitude here even though we have been staying in San Pedro for the last week and a half I think and been acclimatizing to um, uh, higher altitudes and we've also done quite a few drives in higher altitudes. It's still walking around, it <laughs> takes your breath away and uh, Julia especially is a child feeling a lot more of the altitude. At least she's not feeling nauseous because that also can happen. Uh, some people get very nauseous and start vomiting. At least she's not doing that. She's just feeling a little bit lightheaded. So yeah, <laughs> need to take breaks and do it slowly and carefully. We're driving past a few more of geezers. There are even a few flamingos here. And there's a lonely Giza up into the mountains over there. There is nobody else here. Nobody. Definitely worth coming here this time of the day. It's around 11am now and there are flamingos flying over there in the distance. And we've now spotted the cunhas in the background. 
This one has quite a few orange minerals. Michael just put a sign saying do not inhale the steam. Well, it's a bit late because yeah. the previous area had lots of steam in it and we inhaled a lot of it. Some of the geysers aren't any bigger than just small holes. This one's really making a lot of noise. I reckon there must have been about 200 people here this morning. We easily passed, well, just in one area I counted 10 vans. And now there's nobody. Michael and Julia, a geezer, and the cunhas in the background. Julia spotted this volcano that looks like an old woman. And there's a the cunha right next to Michael. The Cunhas, along with the Guanacos, are the only wild camelids in South America. But the Cunhas live in higher altitudes than Guanacos and are the wild ancestors of alpacas. Llamas, which are perhaps better known around the world, as well as alpacas, are domesticated camelids. Those two are fighting, or arguing at the very least. Oh, he's bad! They're spitting at each other. They're all rubbing themselves against that bush. Mm. And that bush looks exactly the same as all the other bushes, bushes, so I'm not quite sure why. This one looks like a baby. Definitely. The way they chew is just so funny. They're just really not worried about us. No, they're more interested in fighting. These vacunas are completely not worried by our presence here. We've been sat here for the last 10 minutes. Just looking at them, and uh, they're completely not worried. They're happy to just sit there and eat their food while we stare at them. <laughs> there are loads of vicuñas around now. There must be dozens of them on this plane. And there were none when we drove up here in the morning. There are dozens of vicuñas in the distance. We've also found some llamas. They're all grazing. This is just outside of the Machuche village. They're so woolly, aren't they? Mm -hmm. 